Recently, United Airlines announced a commercial agreement with a Denver-based supersonic aerospace company called Boom Supersonic to add 15 of their currently in-development Boom Overture aircraft to United's fleet by 2029. The agreement also gives United an option to purchase an additional 35 more supersonic aircraft. How will this affect air travel? Is it even viable for airlines to fly supersonic? How will passenger comfort be affected? Will supersonic travel affect the environment in any way? Today, I'll be answering all these questions and more. So strap in and get comfy, because today, we're diving deep into the realm of commercial supersonic air travel. Before diving into the future of commercial supersonic air travel and its consequences, I need to talk about the past. Despite what many people think, the first supersonic airliner to take to the skies was the Soviet-built Tupolev Tu-144 in December 1968. The Concorde would come to do this just three months later in March 1969. Everybody thought commercial supersonic air travel was the future, but what happened? Yes, there was the benefit of speed, with the Concorde being able to complete a flight from New York to London in just under four hours instead of six on a conventional jet aircraft. However, this came at the cost of severe noise pollution, environmental pollution, and fuel inefficiency. These three factors, along with high maintenance expenses, would ultimately led to the downfall of the Concorde. The Tupolev Tu-144, on the other hand, was poorly designed from the beginning and had tech that was lacking years behind that of the Concords. Despite these factors, both of these aircraft were retired from commercial and private use by the early 2000s. As of 2021, there are no private or commercial supersonic passenger aircraft in service, but there are quite a few in development, the most promising being that of the Boom Overture from Boom Technologies that I talked about earlier in the video. That's quite the name for an aircraft, that'll certainly comfort passengers knowing that they're flying on the BOOM Overture. This is United's supersonic aircraft of choice. Why would United choose to fly supersonic in the first place? The answer, time, environmental, and fuel efficiency. The problem with flying supersonic is that the noise created from a supersonic boom, the noise an aircraft makes when it surpasses the speed of sound, is extremely loud and can even shatter windows from 50 to 60,000 feet in the air. There's a reason we didn't see New York to Los Angeles Concord services. The amount of fuel needed to keep the aircraft's speed above sonic levels would mean that the aircraft would lose its fuel efficiency. Maintenance costs will also be much higher because of the strain put on an aircraft's frame above sonic speeds. Has Boom Technologies with their Boom Overture aircraft fixed these problems? For the most part, yes. The Overture will use sound dampening technologies that didn't exist in the 1960s, which would allow the aircraft to fly supersonic anywhere, unlike the Concorde which could only fly supersonic over oceans. The engines on the Overture will also be able to push the aircraft to supersonic speeds without the cost of fuel inefficiency. Passenger comfort won't be affected either, as the fuselage will be equipped with sound dampening technology. Despite these improvements, there are some disadvantages of the Overture. The aircraft will only have a range of 4,880 miles, for reference that's about the distance between New York to Moscow, and the aircraft will only be able to carry 65 to 88 passengers, depending on the seat configuration. Now that I've covered the past and current situations of commercial supersonic air travel, let's talk about the future of this potentially new industry. Unlike the Concorde with the absurd ticket price of $12,000 or more just to fly on a seat that even for 1990s standards was considered economy, the Boom Overture will have passenger comfort in mind and will be aimed towards business travelers for a more reasonable price. That price is estimated to be at two dollars to $6,000 today. As for the fuel efficiency of the Overture, well, Boom and United claim that the aircraft will have a net zero carbon footprint, meaning that the aircraft will still emit greenhouse gases, but the sustainability of the aircraft, the materials and fuel it uses, will cancel this out. The aircraft will also use Sustainable Aviation Fuel, SAF, as its only source of fuel. The Boom Overture is scheduled to take its first flight in 2026, and the first Overture is scheduled to be delivered to United in mid-2029. As for where the Overture will be based, as of now, this is yet unknown, but it is likely that the aircraft will be based out of United San Francisco and Newark hubs. As of 2021, it is unknown whether it will be viable for airlines to operate supersonic aircraft, but only the future will tell.
That being said, my name is Adam, and I'd like to thank you for watching this video. If you like the video, please feel free to like, subscribe, and turn the notification bell so you my videos, and comment down below what you thought of this video, and if you want more content like this. Once again, thank you for watching this video, and I'll see you guys in the next video. As always, goodbye.